Good evening, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with today's coronavirus update for Thursday, April 9th. Numbers today, 1.53 million cases worldwide with 93,000 deaths. 350-ish thousand people have recovered, though, which is great news. In the U.S., 455,000 cases, around 16,000 deaths, and now 24,000 recoveries. Locally, 3,600 or so cases, 65 deaths. North Carolina, apparently no one ever gets any better here because our health department refused to re release the recovered numbers, so we don't know what that is. As I alluded to earlier about some model changes that we've seen, uh, Dr. Fauci came out today and they've lowered their death estimate from 200,000 to maybe 60,000. So I think that these social distancing things that we're doing are really having an effect. We're seeing much lower rates of rise in these cases than what was expected. Certainly much little B visitor. Certainly much lower than what we've seen in New York so far. Those reduced deaths also are coming with reduced ICU admissions and reduced intubations, in part, I think, because of what we've been talking about. Our understanding of the, of the virus, of the etiology, and how to treat this is changing, and where at the beginning of the crisis, we were instructed and, and all the data pointed to early intubation would save people's lives. We found that wasn't the case. And now we're holding off and we're letting people live with much lower oxygen saturations than we ever would have thought prudent before. And now many of these people are avoiding intubation and then, you know, it's really those intubated people that seem to, to, to die. And so I think we're going to see those death rates drop even further as we get a better handle on how to treat this. Also, we don't know if any of these adjuvant treatments, hydroxychloroquine, azithromycin, any of these things, but there are no, no studies that show that those help at all, but maybe they will. Uh, it, of interest to note today, the, the governing body that oversaw that French study that purported to show all this cure of, of the uh, COVID virus basically has come out and said the, story, the study was horrible, they're retracting it, it was poorly done, kind of what I said I think probably two weeks ago when we talked about this. The question I've had has been about patients testing positive again. And that's been reported in Korea, it's been reported in China, and I don't know if any of them been reported in the US. So there are a number of people that have had the virus, tested positive, recovered, and then are testing positive again. Now, those case reports and studies are interesting, but what they do not do is that they do not say whether those people are getting sick again. And there's another study that came out of China that showed that about a third of people that had the virus did not really develop therapeutic levels of antibodies. So antibodies are the key, right? Antibodies are these little molecules that your body produces that stick to foreign substances, whether it's a virus, a bacteria. And then it's almost like a uh, like tag you're in. If you get one of those antibodies on you, then your body's gonna attack it and destroy it. So if a virus has got an antibody stuck to it, the, the body destroys it. If it doesn't have a, an antibody stuck to it, then the body doesn't know it's there and it can do its damage. And so we wanna be able to detect these antibodies. Those, Fauci talked about that today in the news conference also. Those antibody tests are, are coming, probably gonna be available in the next few weeks. Once we have that, then if you wanna know, you know, I had these symptoms last month or this month, was it COVID, was it something else? We'll be able to do an antibody test and tell you, yeah, it was or no, it wasn't. The other thing I wanted to touch on today was uh, the, the link between vaping and smoking and e-cigarettes and virus. And now there are a number of studies that have, have linked much higher rates of severe disease in smokers and vapors than in, in people that aren't. There's a Chinese study that came out recently that showed the rate of severe disease was twice as high in smokers as it was in non-smokers. And it makes sense that smoke damages the lungs. We think vaping may be even worse because the substance that aerosolizes that vape, gets in the lungs and is very irritating. The other thing about vaping and smoking is what have we talked about? How does a virus get transmitted? You touch something, then you touch your face. Well, if you're smoking, what are you doing? You're constantly touching your face, and that may increase transmission. Uh, a couple updates. We were supposed to be on WCNC this morning. We filmed the whole thing, and Carolyn texted me back a little while later, and there was when they filmed it, there was no audio. So remember, all the reporters are working from home, so literally uh, Carolyn Brooke is recording it on her phone. 
So anyway, we're going to do it again in the morning. We're going to refilm it, and it should be posted on their site and on the news, and we'll repost it on our site tomorrow. And I'm going to push the wellness live event for tomorrow, uh, from today to tomorrow at 5 o'clock. I just needed a, more time to prepare. I've been incredibly busy, and I just didn't feel like I had enough time to be well prepared for this, and I don't want to provide something that's you know, half-baked. I want to make sure that we provide good information. Um, and then on a lighter note, uh, my good friend Cindy uh, Hines up in Syracuse sent me a, a story that apparently social distancing has allowed, has gotten into the animal world and is, a goat was out and humans approached it and it social distanced itself to such an extent that it got stuck underneath a bridge and it had to be rescued. Uh, the other thing of interest is that coyote sightings in North Carolina are way up. And apparently because people are not that much around, the coyotes feel like it's time to come out and have a little party. So if you see a coyote and you live in North Carolina, you're not the only one. We don't normally see them. They're usually pretty secretive. Anyway, I will be on the uh, news tomorrow morning, hopefully this time. We'll see if we can fix the technical difficulties. And then tomorrow night at 5 o'clock, we're going to do a Facebook Live with a focus on wellness and what you can do supplement-wise and lifestyle-wise to minimize your risk of developing this and there's some very interesting data we're going to present about quercetin about zinc and a few other supplements that may really improve your ability to fight off the virus and we're also going to debunk a few of these things like quinine that we talked about last night that a have never been studied and b the required amounts would be so massive of drinking tonic water that you you'd basically die of water intoxication so anyway have a great night i hope everybody stays safe like i always say wash your hands Take care of yourselves, take care of your families, take care of everybody else, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.